Hey everyone, this is Joe. Thanks for joining me on this video for setting up your items for quoting. So I will say that there is a recorded webinar on quoting that you can watch and that kind of covers pretty much everything, a bird's eye view of uh, the basics on setting up uh, your items, setting up your templates, how that feeds into a job and then how you turn that into a quote for your customer. These shorter videos are more um, just about setting up. So either way, I'm glad you're here and let's go through this. So under setup, you'll see quoting, it'll bring you to this page. And so what you have and how the sign tracker quoting system works is you have materials, labor rates, formula items, and taxes that all feed into these templates. And the templates are what you use to create product quoting templates. And you can pretty much create templates for anything. Um, anything from business cards, t-shirts, all the way up to channel letters and electric custom signs. So, so let's talk about materials first. So, you, and you can import your materials. You don't have to enter these in one at a time. I'll show you that in a second. It works just like a, an Excel spreadsheet almost. Um, also, there's a lot of pre-populated items in here, and these might not match what you um, what you get for pricing from your supplier. You can hide these pre-populated items. You don't have to see these. We kind of just put these in here for a little sampling. So let's let's just pull one of these up for a second here. Um, let's pull up a Lumalite, and um, so basically you can name the material. You can decide what category you want it to be in, substrate, uh, unit price, it's $5 a square foot. So basically if you bought this by a four by eight sheet and you want, and you, you, you paid a hundred bucks for it, you just divide that and that would give you your square foot price. Um, we're gonna sell that by the square foot. And then now the markup here is not really for profit. It could be for additional profit, um, I talk to uh, some sign, especially vinyl shops, some sign uh, vinyl shops, and they say, well, hey, for a roll of vinyl, for example, I might put a 50% markup on that roll of vinyl before I even put it into a job where I mark it up for uh, the company. So it's really, it's really kind of for waste. So we, at our sign shop, we used to do things, so we did a lot of routing. So we would buy aluminum sheets or acrylic sheets, and you, no matter how tight you nested, um, that file, you would still have, you know, you'd probably still have 10% waste. So we would put a little bit of a markup on those types of items just to cover that or handling or whatever. So once you, once you have this set up, you save it and then that's it. Um, now, as far as doing this one at a time, uh, you could, it's easier to upload them. So if you can ask your supplier to see if it's possible for them to to do an export, a CSV export of your materials. That might be an easy way to do it. Or if you have all your materials listed on a spreadsheet, that's great too. And basically you can uh, just choose the file and let's see, it would, let me see if I can find this thing on my computer here. Um, uh, let's see, client docs and here it is, upload. And we're gonna go material upload. So I just click that and you can see it fills it in. So it's just like an Excel spreadsheet. Now, if, uh, if, if you don't wanna do the import, you can actually literally just copy the Excel, the columns in, in your Excel spreadsheet and just paste it right here. So it, it literally acts just like a spreadsheet. And that's it, then you save the materials. And, oh, and, and as far as like the categories, you can, um, you can assign the categories here as well. So let's say, um, you know, let's say this is aluminum sheets for, for We'll just choose the first one. And you can see that little uh, square, so it acts like an Excel thing. I can grab that and pull that down. Sometimes it's a little fickle. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna copy that, paste it, grab two of them, and then drag it down. That makes it a little easier. So that's an easy way to do it. Rather than having to select each one, you can just do them in groups like that. So anyway, that's how you upload your material uh, pricing. And so we'll go back to that. We won't save this. And then, um, and then you can always edit it later on. And if you edit your pricing, by the way, in your materials, it's gonna automatically edit whatever templates you create. So if you have a, a price change for aluminum, uh, it goes up to say 120 a sheet as opposed to 100, and sh 100 a sheet, then you can always make that adjustment and it'll, it'll update it in all your templates. Labor rates, um, 
you know, the labor rates, we have a pretty good list here. So I think there's only like 25 of them. So I, I, I suggest, you know, it, it, when you, when you uh, first open your sign tracker account, go through these and just simply delete uh, what you don't use. Like, so say, say for example, oh, I don't, I don't, we don't do that. I can delete that. So delete the things that you don't use and then edit the things that you do for your shop rates. And, um, and, and you can enter your shop rate in here, what you charge the customer if you want to, or you can enter in your shop rate um, after you've, you can work with your accountant to figure out what your, um, what your labor burden is and what your shop rate should be. And then you can mark it up on the quotes. If you, uh, if you email me, joe at sign-tracker.com and just say labor calculator, I have a cool little Excel spreadsheet that will help you actually calculate what your shop um, rate should be. So if you, uh, if you send me an email, again, it's joe at sign, S-I-G-N dash tracker, T-R-A-C-K-E-R.com. I'm happy to send that little tool to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you can take a few minutes and just, you know, go through these, even if it takes, you know, 30 minutes, then that's it. Your labor is all done. It's all set up. Uh, and then you can do an import too. If you, so if you have these labor rates set up in, in QuickBooks and you can export them as a CSV file, you can always import them. Formula items are a little different than materials. So a lot of our sign shops like to enter their formula items in what they charge the customer. So that's completely up to you. I mean, if you charge $5 a square foot for banner to your customer, there's a couple things you could do. One, you could just order a couple of banners from a wholesaler. So if you order a four by eight banner from a wholesaler and, and you know they charge you whatever, $50, then you can just divide that by the square footage to get a wholesale price. And then you can always put a markup on it. That's one way to do it. And then plus it helps build some relationships with some wholesalers. Um, the other way to do it is just to make the sign yourself and kind of track your materials and labor and then divide that to get your square footage price. But if you already have some set pricing that you know works in your market, that's fine too. I mean, again, just like the labor items, there's not that many of these. So you can go through here, just, you know, just delete, um, just delete what you're not using, what it, it doesn't apply to you, and then uh, edit what does. So let's say, for example, banner at $5 a square foot. Well, I charge a little bit more than that. You can come in here and you can just change it. And then there's your, port, you know, your square foot unit price down the bottom here. Uh, the other thing that we do have here, and this is great if you uh, sell print items like business cards or whatever, we have uh, variable pricing. So let's say, for example, well, even for this banner, if you if it's 100 square feet or more, then you knock off 10%. So it's 90% of the unit price. If it's 200, 85%, 250, 80%. And you can add as many tiers as you want if you do if you offer discount pricing based on volume. Now, when you when you build your templates. Um, that'll all be in there so it'll always start with the unit price and then when you're doing a quote inside of a job a real quote inside of a job if you you know if you put 500 as the count well it's automatically going to adjust the price down 20 percent so it's pretty nice so again you know it's it's really up to you if you want to put your your retail price in here that's perfectly fine so um again you know Take a look at this list. I think there's 50 items, you know, 53 items. I mean, just first off, just delete, you know, whatever it is you don't use, you know, and then and then whatever, if these some of them look like, oh yeah, hey, we do flow graphics, then just edit the square footage, footage price or, you know, change the pricing however you charge your customers. And that's it. So if you start off with uh, the labor and formula items, that might take, you know, it might take a couple of hours to get through it all, uh, material a little bit more taxes shouldn't take you too long especially if you're going to be syncing with QuickBooks and then that's it this these are all the items that feed into your quoting templates and don't feel like you have to do it all in a day you know get in start a new job start managing your workflow and if you you know if you want to take four or five things that you do on a regular basis and set up the materials and the formula pricing and the labor pricing for those things. And then as more jobs come down the pike and more needs for quoting different products come down the pike, then you can always um, 
you can always continue to add to this and build it as you go. I know some folks really like to just knock all this out, get it all set up, get all the templates set up and then roll it out to the team. And that's fine too. I mean, whatever works best for you. So, but thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Um, well, in the next video, we'll pick up on the material labor formula items feeding into the templates, how to set up the templates and how all that works. Thanks a bunch and have a great day. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we'll be posting updated videos on a regular basis. And if you have any questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you through our chat tool found in the app. Thanks again. Have a great day.